If you're listening to this, you're probably a horse person. We don't like to ask for help. We are independent. We like to do things on our own. We like to take ownership of everything that we do. I have the great fortune on this channel of being able to bring you interviews with all kinds of professionals from breed trainers, quarter horse, Arab, Frisian, Gypsy, to discipline trainers, Olympic eventers, vets, saddle fitters. And today is gonna to be one of my favorite interviews. Today is a past student. Uh, I always ask my students every, every year, please write down your goals, short term and long term. And uh, I, unfortunately, when I moved away, I had to say goodbye to a lot of some really incredible people who have gone on, we still keep in touch, and I get to meet up with occasionally. This student, this friend, is in town and she's going to pulse one of my other client's horses while she's in town for her husband's triathlon, marathon. And she is going to talk to us about what it's like to show as an amateur, to hit her goals as an amateur. I'm here with Maggie. Maggie, you're gonna have to pronounce your last name for me. It's Breitenbach. And what is your business name? Triad Performance PEMF. And perfect. And then what are you wearing? Um, I went to the Western Dressage World Championships in Oklahoma in September. Um, and my horse and I actually won our division. So I'm wearing my world champion jacket. Um, and it actually has the world champion and my horse's show name, uh, Chief Cake. Chief Cake. Chief for Chief short. Cake. Um, and who's my favorite client? Oh, yeah. I knew I was seeing Karen, so I had to wear my Mindset Equestrian shirt. Represent. <laughs> so Maggie, you and I have known each other like four years? Five? Five maybe more yeah um you uh -huh. you had oh, just that, gotten oh back God, into ride no, i remember yes oh yeah um you I leased you one horse for a second coolest cutest asshole oh. horse oh. oh yeah that's and, right like i don't know what happened but i turned around and you were on the ground frosty the first day what the, are you sure that wasn't the first day because i it swear like i thought you would never come day. back i was like <laughs> <laughs> it's like the second or third day. uh and Somebody's Another horse in the ring fell down and spooked the horse I was on. Yes. Yeah. And and then yeah, okay. And all right. And you did say she's never coming. She's back. never coming back. <laughs> and you did. And then you bought a new vocations track horse. Yes. Who grew, I believe, six to seven inches and then filled out. He was massive. Um, and we made the hard decision that he probably didn't love the sports in which you wanted him to be. Yeah achieving so then you went and found i'm assuming your heart horse correct oh yeah oh yeah he's my bestie tell me about your heart horse because he's special he is special um he's exactly what i didn't want when i went horse shopping um i didn't want anything under 16 hands i didn't want anything white that i would have to bathe i didn't want anything with pink pigmented skin he is all of those things he is a 15 hand varnish roan spanish mustang Um, now, Spanish Mustang is kind of a misleading term because they are not Mustangs in the way that we think about Mustangs. They're not like BLM, Bureau of Land Management Mustangs. He was not wild. He was bred. Um, other people call them colonial Spanish horses, um, but they're descendants of the horses brought over during the Spanish-American War. And he actually is a descendant of the Choctaw Native American strand of Spanish Mustang horses. So he's got a really unique history. They are an endangered species. There's only like estimated 500 to 700 of them left. Um, so oh, he's super hardy. Release. He's super cool. Um, yeah, he's really hardy. They're great for endurance. I want to say his like half sister, she competes in like the Tevis Cup every year. They're all like uniquely colored, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Moreover, this is one of those, because you remember I'm plus sized. These are the historic Spanish horses. So they are small but mighty. Yes. The 20% rule definitely does not apply. Like they're hardy, yes. they're sturdy. These are what like historically- They were ridden into battle. Ridden into battle. Yeah. Like with armor, with like 
your outlanderish dudes and all their muscle. And if you think about it, you want a shorter horse to ride into battle because when you come off, you want to be able to get back on. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah and he's like narrow um, yes. with a ton of action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Spanish Mustangs also are, when, when people say their horses are short-backed, he is actually short-backed. They only go to T17, not T18. Can you point the, to that for me? Through their spine. So, oh, sorry. I pointed a little too hard. So, you know, right about mm -hmm. through there. Um, so actually shorter back, which has made saddle fitting just really fun. She got the dressage saddle <laughs> and then went hardcore into Western dressage. And then you got a custom Western dressage for him, correct? He has a saddle that is built for his back, built for me. Um, it fits us both and it has been a dream. Um, and I have to give Shelby Frimmel a shout out with Double Diamond Saddlery. She's been tagged because I asked yes. for the, I asked for recommendations. I really want to. They're lightweight. They're yeah. if you're coming from English and you're like I don't want to deal with all this tack. I mean, love it and and so comfortable. She has been tagged a lot. I. I... I would like to introduce people to how Western saddles should fit. And I asked for um, guidance and she was tagged a lot. You work full time. Your, your job, I think you actually took on extra jobs when I knew you and probably more so since then. Um, and you're very passionate about your work, whether you know it or not. You, you appear to be like all in in everything that you do. How did you manage or how did you keep yourself calm, proud, happy, not feel deterred? right yeah so like winters are hard um workload is hard how did you keep yourself positive i think there's a constant reassessment of values that keeps happening um and that's where some of the shifts have happened so when i decided to start a pemf business i you know already had some kind of health fitness background and i knew that working with horses and working with people to feel better would be something that would bring me joy and so it was kind of born out of i need something else that's going to strike joy in my life and while it was hard to manage both again i keep continuing to ask myself is my life working for me or am i working hard to make life happen um and i am in a place where i'm looking to make life work for me um, so that way I can continue to do the things that I love. But you've been very patient to get there. Yes. Like you, you, years. you had she for three ish years. Yes. And then this has been your big year showing like you, you were patient with yourself and yeah. your job and where you were in life. Right. Did you ever have moments of feeling defeated or sad at work of like, Constant. how did you make sure that you, you didn't feel rushed or that you weren't doing a good enough job with your partner? I kind of had to get to a point where I had to get very realistic with myself, my expectations of myself and my horse, and understand that the limitations in my life at the time did not equate to the goals that I had. And so I was like, okay, if I have these goals, but I don't have the time, the capability, I have to figure out how we can move in that direction in a way that makes sense. And for me, that meant asking for help. That was really, really hard. If you're listening to this, you're probably a horse person. We don't like to ask for help. We are independent. We like to do things on our own. We like to take ownership of everything that we do. And I was in a place where I was like, okay, I need help with my horse. We've also been raised that way. Yes. Yeah. That, that we're less than if we're asking for help. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Or you have this horse. Why do you need extra? Right. I should be able to do yes. this myself. That's a really hard battle for a lot of people. You said you asked for help. In what ways did you ask for help? At the end of the day, again, I had to keep asking myself, like, what is this for? And yes, I had goals in mind, but the ultimate thing for me was I want to enjoy my horse's company and I want to enjoy my time with my horse. And that means not feeling anxious about getting on. That means, you know, trusting the partnership and, and on all of that. So, yes, I did end up um, seeking the help of Balanced Equestrian, uh, Brandon and Noel Sammons. They've done an amazing job. And what I think has really helped is... It is very much a horse first approach. What right. does this horse need? Um, and for him, he needed to go back. He needed a clean slate. That was really hard because the first three months of training was not in saddle, we're making this horse into a dressage horse. It was, we're doing groundwork. We're teaching this horse that he doesn't have to go with his head around in the air constantly. We're teaching this horse how to relax when we add pressure not in a saddle, but on the ground, like very, very basic stuff. And it took about three months of just undoing 
for him to even be in a place where we could start doing it again. So I appreciate that from you. I appreciate that from them. I've known them since yeah. they were both like young teenagers. Yeah. And I appreciate that they're not going to compromise their methodology yeah. for pressure. Not that you would have put pressure on them. Right. And I appreciate that they did take the time with the horse. Again, we're at a barn where time was taken with every one of the horses in this barn. And they are happy, healthy athletes that show up most of the time. Right, buddy? Most of the time. <laughs> Just a little redheaded moment. And and are quite successful. But that's that's really hard to to allow our trainers or or even ourselves to yeah. trust the process you have to kind of say to yourself is this going to take me three more years or do we go ahead and send them off to someone we trust that works well with us yeah and let them kind of polish it up a little bit yeah and that was hard because that meant admitting that i couldn't do it myself which is the hardest part but you you could it would have taken a lot longer yeah while we're chatting about this, this horse is an athlete. This horse has regular saddle fit, regular red light therapy, regular massage, regular everything. Like there's no question, right? Ice booted, treated like a king. Um, but when you're saying he's he's releasing and or showing signs, what are you what do you mean? Um, so PEMF for anybody watching, it's a hard sensation to describe right. what it feels like. The best thing I can do is say that it feels like a TENS machine, if you've ever used a TENS machine. But the difference between a TENS machine and PEMF, it's a TENS machine you can tend to feel like on the surface of your muscles, but PEMF works deep through cells, through tissue, through fascia. Um, and so it's almost like an internal clicking. And so sometimes we'll see their muscles responding and it'll be a little bit of kind of like reverberating through their muscles. Um, but what we were seeing here was a little bit of, uh, I wanna say a little bit of sinking, a little bit of dipping through there. And that I think is sen just sen sensitivity to the sensation. Like, ooh, this is something new. And the only way I can describe it is if you've ever had you know, oh, a, that, deep, yeah. a deep tissue massage. Uh -huh. It feels good, but it can also feel like, ah, you know, like right. you're, hitting the, you're hitting the spot that's like sore that needs attention. So, um, you know, we pay close attention to- So you went down in the pulse instead of up in the pulse to let him get comfortable correct, with it. Correct, because I never want to create tension in the body. I want them to be able to adjust to it. And you can see he just did a big yawn, another one there. So he's now feeling okay with the amount of pulse that he's got. And depending, we might, we might dial it back up a little bit, but. You pulse before or after competition or both? You can do both. Um, so I always recommend if you're going to do it before, that it's important that you know how your horse is going to respond rather than the first time you do it being right before a competition, because some horses end up feeling so good. It mm. really fires them up. Mm -hmm. um, some horses, it makes them so relaxed that they can kind of turn into deadheads a little bit. Speaking of which, I have autoimmune. I'm an oddball, right? Maggie knows this, Allie knows this. Um, my skin just reacts differently. She has pulsed me several times when I've had mm -hmm. staph and MRSA on my face. I've never gone directly on. Yeah, um, yeah. When I have an outbreak, it hardens and swells and, and gets into my sinuses and eyes. She has been very kind to help it. And it has, it, it did not in initially release like at the point of pulsing, but within six hours, I think it was completely like moving and draining. Yeah. Like, it, and, and it, the pain is not unbearable for those kind of, oh. But moreover, I get like really tingly. I can't have direct air on me. I would be a cold backed horse. I would be one of those sensitive horses yeah. that's just odd. I would be one of those mares you'd have to check the girths. Like a tapestry girth might be better than like a neoprene girth. I just react differently. And so when the pulses come on me, um, and I've had, um, what's the back? Sci sciatic. Yeah, um, sciatic is where it's hurting. I have to go very low. If yeah. I have a basic massage, I'm sore as hell. Whereas like my husband, you could walk on him with heels and he'll be like, bounce though. Um, so it's just different. It's it, it doesn't necessarily mean that like um, your horse is in massive pain. It just might be how they react to yeah. things. Yeah. So I talked to Maggie several times when she was in Oklahoma and you were so excited, not yes. only for her winning rounds, um, but the experience you were talking about how nice everybody was and how many yes. different breeds were. Oh my gosh. Tell me about it. I think, I think that when I walked away, you know, after I had time to process Western dressage world championships, 
I think the thing that I took away, um, and, and this is through all the levels, right? I was at a pretty, the lowest level you could be at Worlds, but all the levels, there were horses of all different breeds, riders of all different body types. I mean, it really felt to me like, wow, there's not one right kind of person and horse pair that are supposed to be here. Like this really does feel like it's for everyone, which, you know, the message about dressage is it is for every horse. So it really felt nice to see so many breeds represented in it, and there were breed awards, and I think they went through like you had 20 or 30. Gated breeds. there? I know there was, there was a lot of gypsies. Yeah, yeah there okay. was gated, um, and they went through, it might, it might have been 30 different breeds um, that were winning breed awards. Um, so just so many different breeds represented, and I really loved how kind everybody was, how inclusive it felt, and that I didn't see like one type winning everything and uh, i was asked recently because I'm, I'm doing some commentary on yeah. the, the congress it's not a jog jog some horses do a jog jog and yeah. some horses do like your horse moves oh yeah he's he's got he's got action he's yeah he he can move and and brandon's horse like they yeah. move out yes. so it, it can be a trot you can post and sit in western dressage yes i also want to go back to she wanted the lowest level and then okay. she made a face she qualified went and was successful yes. at a level yes and it was um it was like the biggest goal i don't even think it was on your list of it was goals. not on my list anytime no. we're making headway any progress like sometimes just they stood at the mounting block and they didn't walk off that's yeah. a win like you don't have to show and you we don't did that <laughs> we did that i might be mentioning For a that part of last year <laughs> we did mounting block i mean my horse now will side pass to me at the mounting block and this is a horse that would walk off. I mean, you remember when we went to oh, go try him no, out, like I, two people yep. had to hold him, mm -hmm. you know? So I do progress. Yeah. I remember <laughs> loading him. Yes. <laughs> he walks right on a trailer now. It, it was like midnight. It took three it, hours. It, it took, yeah, yeah, we got him on, we got him home. We got him home. He's grown up a lot. One, one final question to my friend Maggie with triad performance, performance P -E -M -F. PEMF. Um, what would you get, what advice would you give to another amateur wanting to reach their goals? I would ask you to think deeply about what the goals actually are and what is actually the motivation behind those goals. Oh, you know, I like that. because like we all like, we want to go out there and we want to win and we want to do stuff. But at the end of the day, the reason we like to do those things is because it feels good. Right. And I think we have to get to the point where well, we were trained to do it. Time with our horse feels good, and that has to be the goal. And now, while, and I already talked about Oklahoma a little bit, and winning was really cool, but my favorite part of the whole thing was A, getting to spend so much time with my horse, um, B, that I felt like the whole way I trusted him. And we just, gelled. oh, yeah. I mean, in the warm up okay. and going to and from the show, and we feel that like you had anxiety. the basics, you had that good solid yes. foundation. And that, like, we did a trail ride around this massive I show property. Yeah. Um, and, and I just got to go have fun with my horse, which at the end of the day is like why we're all doing this. I love that. Yeah. I, I do. I love that. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. I miss you. I'm what, too. how can people find you? Um, I am on Instagram and Facebook at Triad PEMF. I also have a website, www.triadpemf.com. Did you design it yourself? I did, yeah. Do you do that too, so? Yeah, I, I can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. Thank, Thank you. you.